is absolutely pouring at the moment, so we are just gonna sit it out for five minutes and hope that this passes over. Well, spring is here and that winter grind is finally behind us. It is still, however, bitterly cold and I've just put the kayak in the water and that water temperature is hovering right on about 11.5 degrees. So it is still bitterly cold. And what you're gonna find is over the next few weeks, it is still gonna be pretty challenging out there, but we go through a massive transformation over the next couple of months, obviously as that outdoor temperature and the water temperature rises up and we move towards peak snapper time, which gets really exciting. What we did do towards the back end of winter though, was do a lot of freshwater fishing for your trout. We got involved in your stonker process programs and your stocking and your events up at places like Eildon which was a lot of fun and a great distraction but today we are back at the bay we've got the Hobie kayak and this is one of my favorite places along the Ballerine Peninsula now it is a full moon this morning which isn't great we have had a lot of rain and typically full moons usually mean slow tides and slow fishing so that might be the challenge ahead of us so I've got a very gentle southerly today and usually in this part of the bay when you've got a gentle southerly it means that it's quite flat conditions which is really awesome Really excited to be back here out on the bay. Try and get stuck into a bit of a mixed bag today. So I've got a few different rods with me. We've got a squid rod, we've got some soft plastics, we've got a bait, and this is an area, the whole stretch along that Ballerine Peninsula is just full of clean water and lots of weedy zones in the shallows. And it's great for a whole range of fish species, whether that's squid, whether it's pinkies, flathead, whiting, you name it. So we're gonna be out there and trying to get through a whole range of things. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoy the episode. Sit back and let's get fishing. marks in this area where I've done really really well on squid in the past so what we're gonna do is we're gonna venture straight out to that area we have had heavy rain this morning but that water clarity is still looking pretty good that wind has just died down so as I said it is full moon usually that means quite tough fishing but the water clarity is exceptional today so usually that's the biggest key thing when I'm out squid fishing is can you see the weedy zones and have you got good water clarity Squid is a species that relies very, very heavily on eyesight. Obviously, they've got those big bulgy eyes. And when you've got crystal clear waters, that's usually a good sign that it's gonna be a pretty reasonable day on the squid. So, spring is here, that water temperature is gonna slowly warm up. So, I think uh, it won't be too long before we're catching pinkies and whiting and all that sort of stuff in good numbers once again. But uh, let's go wrangle a few squid. There we go, got one. Okay. Well, it's been a bit of hard work. We finally got one, and it's not a bad one either. All right, there we go. We got our first squid of the day. Certainly no monster by any means, but it's a squid, and we will take that. So we'll just mark a waypoint because it has been a bit quiet this morning. Now, one thing I did during the week was I went to Elba Park Lake and I was fishing for those stonker trout. I landed one good one on a dollar bait junkie grub, which was really awesome. However, in all the excitement, I left my really good Berkeley collapsible foldable net and completely forgot about it. What it means today is that um, I've got to use this tiny little net, which is not very good for this style of fishing, especially for squid, because they're a little bit flighty when you get the net out to try and land them.
Yeah, I got one. I love the sound of that reel, isn't it? It's so good. So that was on a black squid jig. Oh. Oh. The trick today so far has been covering lots of ground, changing the jig colors over and over again and just sort of going through the motions. You know, you have some days where you come out and you bag out in like 10 minutes, and you have other days where you get to work real hard for them, and today's one of those days. But certainly not a reason to give up because you can still catch lots of really cool stuff like that. So you can see I've just flicked across to this one here. It's actually a black color, but it's got blue and red foil. So depending on which way you look at it, it does change color. But uh, there's your end result there, which is really good. And very slowly, we're kind of working our way up to our bag now, which is really, really good in these conditions. Are you serious? Oh, I got one, got one. I got a good one. I got a good one. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, oh, it's on by one tentacle with this little net. That's gonna be. Oh, I reckon I'm gonna lose this one. Oh, oh no. So this is what I've been going with lately. So this is just a NS Blackwater 2. This is the 7.6 version, which is probably bordering on a tad long for a kayak, but I do like the rod. I've got a van for 2,500 and I've got the custom Demexus Power double handle on there, which is a really, really cool outfit. Um, got a really, really nice squid jig here today. The best thing about this squid jig is it's not mine. <laughs> so <laughs> I was fishing with Darren the other day at Western Port. We were scoping out some new grounds, getting some marks up for members, and um, this was tied onto my rod and didn't go back. So it's gonna be great. We might try and bag out with squid uh, on a jig that's not even mine today. So this is one of those evergreen banshees. Beautiful, beautiful squid jigs. So it's 3.5 size, which might be a tad big for this area because it is high tide at the moment, but the deepest we're gonna be fishing here is gonna be probably, I'd say, about three meters at the max. So if that gets too big and too heavy, then what we'll do, we'll swap around and put one of the smaller ones. Yeah. Oh, here we go, hey. Pull and drag, mate. Is that like, is that squid, or soft squid rod. This is huge. It is bloody big, Trav. Oh yeah, this is a big one. Ho oh, ho ho ho! This is a really good one. Oh no 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 no! Come back! Come back! Come back! <gasps> Bad day to have the wrong. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Now, we'll just clean myself up. Look at that. I got squid ink all over my face, my hat, <laughs> and my glasses. So, we're going to give that a clean. It has been a pretty challenging morning, but things start looking up when you catch some nice big squid like that. So, <laughs> that is a big squid and that was actually peeling a little bit of line which is so unusual especially because all the squid that we've caught so far have been quite small quite docile catches and that without doubt is the squid of the day so we're just gonna put him up there so there you go that is a really really nice catch and it's even better when you do it on someone else's squid jig so that was the one i said at the start that uh I was fishing with Darren two days ago, left that one on the rod. So that is that evergreen one. So that big squid there has been caught on that there. So that there is absolutely awesome. We're gonna get him on ice.
Oh. oh. Idiots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was fiddling around with, and this rod was just sitting there, and I saw the rod tip go boom, 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 and it picked it up, and it was gone. Oh, he's back, he's back. <laughs> is that your squeaky squad? Yeah. <laughs> At least you know I wasn't talking bullshit now, so. <laughs> I was like, I'm sure that was on. That's a bright yellow one, it's not big. I got one. Yep. Oh, this net is killer. Oh, seven, seven foot six rod and a tiny net. <laughs> like a challenge. So there is another squid there. So we are grinding. We are getting closer and closer to our bag limit. What's been really funny is every time we've had a bit of a rain band come through, the squid fire up. And then what happens is those clear conditions come through and then the squid go quiet. There we go, got another squid. Good squid too. Yep. To just uh, move this to the side here because this net's very short and I've got a very long rod as I've mentioned. All right, so another color change required there. The good news is though, I think we're one squid away from our bag now. So I went, sorry, matey, let that go. So that was on the black once again, and that got him hammered straight away. So there is another squid. It doesn't matter, we're pretty close to that bag limit now. So one more, one more squid and that's it. We're done for the day. So lots and lots of color changes today. So I've got the whole basically kit out with me today. So I've got, I don't know, a good 15 squid jigs there and a couple more in my backpack. And We've tried some of the flash boost ones. We've had white, we've had red, we've had gold, we've had black. We've had just about every color you can think of on today. And I think I've got two on the golds, one on the red, a couple on the whites, and probably four on the black. So black has definitely been the standout color today. And must admit, I jumped onto the blacks after a mate of mine uh, caught a couple on blacks. So, but. It's a bit of a weird thing. I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit a lot on our podcast is that, um, you know, squid, by all reports, can see lots and lots of different spectrums of black and white, but don't necessarily see all those different colors, yet they respond to different colors on different days. So it's a fascinating thing. I've got mates that are convinced that you need to get out there and crack the code every day. Oh, had an absolute mashing on one then. So, but um, that's what makes this form of fishing so much fun. It's about going out, trying different things, chopping, changing colors, chopping, changing techniques, covering different ground. But if you work hard enough, you will get your bag. Now we've got some pretty detailed videos that we've already done on how to catch squid. There's some really good beginner guides that you can go back and have a look at on the Fishing Mad YouTube channel. Um, but if you're new to this stuff, there's nothing overly fancy about it. Go and buy a handful of squid jigs in different sizes and different colors. Get out there and experiment. You basically cast. And then all you're doing is just this lifting and then winding in a bit of slack and letting that jig sink back to the bottom. You're basically repeating that process all the way back into your boat or kayak. And that's all there is to it. And the whole logic about that is that you're trying to imitate a wounded fish or bait fish or prawn of some sort. And that's what the squid are like. Now around here, a lot of the squid do like to eat the whiting. We've had several sessions where we've caught whiting and you'll see a lot of those squid coming in and chasing the whiting. So that's why we feel like your colors, like your whites and your golds, and that will do quite well because it's not just about imitating the bait that's in here. It's also imitating some of your other fish species like your whiting because the squid are very actively feeding on those whiting, which is a bit of a surprise at first when you see it, but 
That is very, very much what happens. So sometimes matching the hatch with your whites and your golds is a really good thing. Now, the sun is coming out again, which is good because it is absolutely freezing. And uh, it'd be nice to have some feeling back in the old fingers. This whole stretch, pretty much from Curl Lewis through to Clifton Springs, Port Arlington, Indented Head, St. Leonard's, and beyond even towards Queenscliff, those whole shallow areas are just chock full of great ecosystem that holds squid. And we're talking about nice shallow waters, clean water, but just chock full of weed patches. And that's where you get squid in good numbers and really, really good size ones. So I've got some trusty marks here that I'm just going across to now, but this whole area here holds some squid. Get amongst the action. You don't have to go out too deep. You don't need extravagant gear and you can get onto some really, really cracking squid. You can see right now, I'm just going over a patch here, which is a combination of clearing of nice clean sand and then nice thick weed. To me, that is the absolutely perfect stuff that we're looking for. Happens to be exactly directly on top of my mark. Come on, want that bag today. Worked bloody hard for it, be nice to get it. it. Sure has been a frustrating weather day. One minute the sun's out, the next minute it's pouring, then it's cold, then it's warm. This jacket keeps coming on and off every five seconds, which has been a tad frustrating today, but that's typical Melbourne weather, especially at this time of year, early spring. Just be prepared for anything. So you're gonna have cold weather, you're gonna have heavy rain, you're gonna have sun. What better place would you wanna be out in the bay? There we go, got another squid. Yep. All right. We'll take that, and these ones here are probably the best eating ones. Those real little ones are very, very tender. Yep, another one. There we go. All right, so there's another. He's only small, this one, so we can lift him up. So there we go. So there is another there. So that there is our bag for the day. So how good is that? So definitely not big ones today. Lots. Of... Is that how you want to end the day? With squeaking all over your face? <laughs> but there you go. There's your bag limit there. I'm going to have to tidy myself up now because I've got all salt water and ink all over my face. We persisted. It was a hard day in terms of the weather, the water clarity, the full moon. It was pretty slow out here, but chop and change your colors, chop and change your techniques, cover lots of ground. And then at the end of the day, you are rewarded with a bag of squid and a face and hat full of squid ink. Well, that's a wrap everyone. And thanks for watching. It was a challenging day out here, but as you can see, the conditions right now are absolutely phenomenal. That wind has died off. It is really, really calm, very, very comfortable. But we're gonna call it a day. We've got our double bag of squid. We've had to work very hard for them. We've had to chop and change colors and do different drift lines and do all sorts of creative things just to get our bag of squid. But we've done that, which is absolutely fantastic. And you know what? That's really great because obviously as we head into snapper season, that's gonna give us some fresh bait. It's also gonna give us some great feeding over the next few days. Anyway, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. I appreciate you tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the screen next time. Take care, everyone. Right, well, there you go. That's how we're ending our day. And we've got first kayak there with a really good bag of squid. And then we've got yours truly with another bag of squid. A couple of fallen off the side there. And then we've got the big boy in the middle there. So that is not a bad day at all. <laughs>